Hey guys, um, I'm gonna be taking you guys to the space Nino today. Um, the weather looks a bit cloudy. Um, hope it get, hope it be sunnier when we get there. Now we are on our way to the Space Needle. For those of you who don't know, the Space Needle is an observation tower and one of the most famous attractions of the whole Pacific region. It's located in 400 Brock Street, Seattle, Washington. The Space Needle was opened in the middle of 20th century, and for a few years, it was the tallest construction in Seattle and the state of Washington. The Space Needle is over 600 meters tall and it's possible to reach the observation area by fast elevators for about 40 seconds. Next, my peers will go into much more details about the profound history and some fascinating stories of the Space Needle. In addition to rainy weather, Starbucks, Amazon, Seahawks, and Boeing, Seattle is also known for the Seattle Space Needle. How the needle came to be is an interesting story that started with a doodle. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first satellite to orbit which began the race to put a man on the moon. The United States wanted to be the first one to succeed. The Space Needle was a key symbol of the fair and the United States commitment to go to space. The colors painted had space themes. The framing metal legs were painted astronaut white. The slender interior tower was painted orbital olive. The ring that extends at the top was painted re-entry red while other elements of the dome-shaped top were painted galaxy gold. In 1959, Edward E. Carlson was the chief organizer in the World's Fair. He got the inspiration of the needle when he traveled to Germany. He doodled an idea on a napkin and decided to make it happen for the fair. He called it the Space Needle. When King, when King County declined to fund the project, five private investigators funded it. The Space Needle was built on the former site of Seattle's fire station. It was built in 1962 for the Seattle's World Fair and took 400 days to complete. Over 20,000 people rode the elevators on opening day. The Space Needle is 605 feet tall and 138 feet wide. It weighs 9,550 tons and can withstand winds up to 200 miles per hour as well as earthquakes of 921 magnitudes. The top of the Space Needle has 25 lightning rods that help absorb and disperse lightning strikes the structure may receive. On December 14, 1961, Robert Kessler climbed the Space Needle in a Santa Claus costume to install a Christmas tree which is still done to this day. In 1963, after the fair, a radio broadcast booth was built on the Space Needle for a local radio station. It wasn't until April 1999 that the Seattle Landmarks Preservation Board approved the Space Needle as a historical landmark. It was the first structure approved on the basis of all six designation criteria, ranging from architectural merit to historical and physical prominence. In 1957, a restaurant and banquet facility at the tower's 100 feet level was added to serve the throngs expected for Seattle Center's display of the King Cut treasures. In 2000, the tower completed a 20 million revitalization in 2000. The project included construction of the pavilion level, space-based retail store, Sky City restaurant, observation deck improvements, exterior lightning additions, exterior painting, and more. In comparison, the space unit was built in for about $4.5 million in 1962. On September 2017, the Space Needle began construction on the largest renovation project in its history, titled the Century Project. The renovation aimed to reveal the tower's internal structure and harken back to the original conceptual sketches, all while expanding and improving its views. The Space Needle remained open to the public during its 360-degree space lift, revealing its new look in late summer of 2018. There is now two multi-level floor-to-ceiling glass viewing experiences, including an outdoor observation level with open-air glass walls and sky riser glass benches. 
The upper observation level is now connected by the oculus stairs to the loop, the world's first and only rotating glass floor below. Going into the Space Needle, the price of the tickets surprised me a bit. Each ticket is $35.99. The ticket includes access to the Space Needle's 520-foot indoor and open-air observation level, access to the loop, the world's first and only revolving glass floor, located on the 500-foot observation level, access to digital experiences, including picture-taking and Star Wars VR, that is a new virtual reality bungee jump experience. Although there are many services provided along, I still felt the tickets is a bit more, a bit of pricey. So how much revenue does the needle make each year? Oliver will take us to know more about the, more about the needle's finance situation. All right, so I'm Oliver Belcher. I'm part of the Space Needle Group for Biz 300. Um, I've had the pleasure of visiting the Space Needle ever since I was a little kid. Uh, born and raised in Green Lake, so it was always kind of a thing that me and my siblings would do growing up. Or whenever relatives would come into town, it'd be a place we'd always go and visit. So a lot of fond memories of uh, going down to the Space Needle and the Seattle Science Center. Um, it's been crazy over the past couple of years to kind of see the evolution of that area, and just how much it's changed just with the new influx of people moving to Seattle and all the new money <coughs> that's coming in. Um, yeah, I, I actually wrote about it in my reflection, just how much it's how much it's really changed. A lot of the memories that I have at the Seattle Center um, uh, no longer exist. It used to be a huge amusement park where you could go and ride a bunch of rides, and I wrote specifically about this pirate ship ride that was there that I may or may not have had a traumatic experience with, and uh, kind of scared me from riding roller coasters for a while. So. Uh, maybe not the most fond of memories, but memories nonetheless. Um, my job within our group was to cover some of the finances and revenue and just kind of look at how much it really has changed over the years. Um, the Space Needle brings in an annual revenue of about 10 to $25 million per year, according to Glassdoor, and employs over 200 people. Uh, the plot of land that the Space Needle inhabits is 120 feet by 120 feet. And uh, the property was originally bought was originally bought for seventy five thousand um, dollars. The iron workers who built the Space Needle were paid three dollars and ninety two cents an hour. So to put that into perspective, and a little bit of inflation there. Um, over the years, there's been some renovations done to the Space Needle. Uh, in two thousand, there was a twenty million dollar revitalization. And just recently, in September of 2017, there was another $100 million renovation project. Um, however, the Space Needle did remain open to the public during this time, and as they were uh, installing their 360-degree space lift reveal. Uh, it's their new look. Uh, they're now surrounded by two breathtaking multi-level floor-to-ceiling glass viewing experiences, including an outdoor observation level with an open-air glass wall and a sky razor glass bench. Uh, the upper observation level is now connected by the oculus stairs to the loop, the world's first and only rotating glass floor, which is below. And the Space Needle is actually a private company, uh, making it a little, more, a little difficult for me to get a hold of their financial information, unfortunately. So a lot of this stuff I had to use third-party sites to discover. But yeah, that is uh, my section on finances and revenue for the Space Needle. Alright, now we're on the top of the Space Needle's observation level. The weather, they got a lot better. So while watching this amazing view, Aiden will tell us some of the interesting fun facts of the Space Needle. The Space Needle is the number one tourist attraction in the Pacific Northwest and cost $45 million at the time to build. The Space Needle was conceived, designed, and built by locals. Chief Architect John Graham Jr. oversaw the design. He wanted a top to the needle that resembled a UFO. 
He also had built a revolving bar in Hawaii and adapted that turntable technology to the needle, making it the first freestanding rotating restaurant in the world. The original name of the Needle's restaurant was Eye of the Needle after the name Top of the Needle was rejected. There have been three restaurants at the Space Needle since its opening. Eye of the Needle, 1962 and 1979, Emerald Suite from 1980 to 1999, and Sky City from 2000 to present. During the fair, the Needle was a magnet for 60s leaders, artists, and celebrities, including Richard Nixon, Walt Disney, John Wayne, Neil Armstrong, and many more. Many celebrities have visited the Needle since, including all of the original cast of Star Wars. A number of famous Hollywood films have also been featured at the Needle. Elvis Presley's starred in It Happened at the World's Fair and Dr. Evil in Austin's Powers. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin visited in 2012 to present the winner of the Space Race promotion celebrating the Space Needle's 50th anniversary. Many Seattle musicians and bands have visited or performed on the needle, including Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Mudhone, and Macklemore. The needle is also known for holding events and showing its great love for its city. It has been hosting New Year's at the Needle, the city's fireworks show, every year since 1982. Each year, crews mount fireworks along the entire Space Needle structure from top to bottom to transform Seattle's landmark into one massive fireworks show. The Space Needle has saluted the successes of Seattle sports teams over the years by painting the white roof with logos and congratulatory messages, hoisting flags, and more. These paintings have included the logos of the University of Washington Huskies football team, the Seattle Mariners, and the Seattle Supersonics. In 1995, the Needle placed an oversized inflatable baseball on the halo surrounding the observation deck to celebrate the Mariners' first ever playoff appearance. Mariners great Jay Buna raised a flag in honor of Seattle's most iconic athlete, Ken Griffey Jr., after Griffey's election to the Baseball Hall of Fame. The Space Needle has raised the 12th flag for Seahawks fans as well as flags for the Mariners, Sounders, and Storm. Those raising these giant 20 by 30 flags include notable athletes and coaches. In 2013, during the Super Bowl, the Space Needle shot off fireworks after every Seattle Seahawks touchdown. It got to the point where the fireworks team had to ration them so that there would be enough for the end of the game as the Seahawks won 43-8. Due to a design error, the needle elevator with the best view facing downtown in Mount Rainier wound up as the freight elevator. There have been six parachute jumps from the needle. Two were unauthorized, and the other four were part of the promotion. I went to the Space Needle with David. It took me 40 minutes to drive from school. We were lucky because the weather was very sunny. In the group, my role is a photo photographer. As a photographer, the scenery that can be shot on a sunny day will be more beautiful. I found that many people who go to the Space Needle are tourists from other places. In fact, this is my fifth visit to the Space Needle. My first visit to the Space Needle was in high school, and I went to Seattle with a few friends. There is no triple glass when the first time I came, but now the panoramic triple layer glass above can put more views and when the weather is particularly good you can see the more beautiful scenery i think the seattle space needle as a landmark is very memorable on the first floor of the space needle there are many models of the space needle for sale the facility at the top of the tower are also complete. As an international student, I've heard about the Space Needle a couple times when I studied the US history. Um, it's been fascinating experiences being able to to actually go up there for a start a class project. Um, the views to me are amazing. I've actually 
never went up that high to a skyscraper and to just enjoy and taking pictures, shooting videos. Um, after the visit, um, I really understand and appreciate the reason why Space Needle can become the symbol of the city Seattle. Um, I think people who live in Seattle are really taking it as part, a part of their culture. Um, the needle is really like a witness of the history what the city has been through and also a witness of how the city become prosperous. Um, with that said, I want to thank you guys for watching and I hope this video can educate you guys about this great monument, Space Needle in Seattle. Thank you.